We are very pleased to inform you that today is a milestone for the Philippine statistical system as it marks the release for the first time the very first set of first semester official provincial poverty statistics cognizant of the urgent need and demand for more timely statistics. This presentation shall cover an overview of the first semester official provincial poverty estimation methodology, highlights of the 2012 first semester official provincial poverty statistics with back estimates for the first semesters of 2006 and 2009 and other details. Recall that the NSCB has been generating official statistics on poverty since 1987, which examined poverty in 1985. In 1996, Executive Order 2 designated the NSCB to continue compiling official figures on poverty with a technical committee on poverty statistics, or TC Bobstat, formulating the methodology to be used. This committee is composed of poverty experts from the academe, research institutions, as well as representatives of data producers in government and other poverty stakeholders. But how does the NSCB generate official poverty statistics? Essentially, we use income data sourced from the NSO's Family Income and Expenditure Survey, or FIES, as our welfare indicator. <clears throat> we determine food thresholds across urban and rural areas of various provinces in the country. These food thresholds represent the cost of a bundle of food items that are considered minimum and satisfy the nutritional requirements set by the Food and Nutrition Research Institute, or FNRI, while remaining economically and socially productive. The cost of this food bundle is generated from actual prices collected by the National Statistics Office, or NSO, and the Bureau of Agriculture Statistics, or BAS. Those falling below this food poverty line are considered subsistence poor, food poor, or you might think of them as extremely poor. Non-food adjustments to the cost of the food bundle are made to account for the cost of minimum basic non-food needs such as housing, transportation, education, health, among others. This comprises the poverty threshold. Those families or individuals whose incomes are less than the poverty threshold are considered poor, while those above are considered not poor. To summarize the poverty data, we employ a summary measure called poverty incidence, which represents the proportion or percentage of people below the poverty line. Aside from the incidence of poverty, we also report the magnitude or total number of poor persons or subsistence poor in the population. However, for purposes of this report, the preliminary first semester poverty figures will be presented using incidence as the main objective is to present the trends over time. The magnitude of the poor shall not be presented. Aside from an examination of the population, we can also describe po poverty among families with similar nomenclature. <clears throat> the compilation of poverty statistics is a result of an interagency collaboration with data inputs from the FNRI, the BOSS, and the NSO. By the way, uh, I would like to point out the presence of various of some partner agencies, specifically the assistant director of the Bureau of Agricultural Statistics, Maura Lisserando. Specifically, as regards the welfare indicator on income, the NSO 
conducts the FIES every three years. The NSO visits their FIES sample households twice, first in July, to conduct the income and expenditures of households for the first semester, and then in January of the succeeding year to gather the data for the second semester of the previous year. For your information, when NSO interviews their households, targeting 51,000 samples, the average interview time lasts for five hours to complete a questionnaire of 70 pages, 24 pages of which are devoted to questions on income. In the past, it would take at least a year from the time of field visits of the FIES for the results of the FIES to be made available to the NSCB owing to processing and extensive data quality checks of the nearly 51,000 sample households. For instance, after the results of the 2009 FIES was provided to the NSCB in January of 2011, the 2009 poverty data was released by the NSCB in February of 2011. Cognizant of the need for more frequent and timely poverty statistics, NEDA Director General Arsenio Balisacan suggested to the NSO and the NSCB to work together on the examination of first semester FIES data. This is also in line with the earlier efforts and discussions of the TC OBSTA and the NSCB on this matter. It must be stressed that while this is a new activity for the PSS, no additional resources, particularly human resources, were provided to the agency's concern. In consequence, the NSCB convened a series of meetings and coordinated with its partners in the generation of poverty data starting September 2012 up to the second week of April of this year. These activities resulted in the approval of a methodology to generate first semester official provincial poverty statistics on the 17th of April, 2013. And at this juncture, we wish to express our sincerest gratitude to all our partners, especially the NSO, the BOSS, and the very committed members of the NSCB Technical Committee on Poverty Statistics chaired by Dr. Celia Reyes of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. By tradition, the NSCB releases poverty figures within a month from the provision of the FIES microdata by the NSO to the NSCB. We appreciate the NSO for working closely with us in generating poverty estimates much earlier than the usual practice specifically on the provision of the FIES microdata in April of 2013, so that we now have today the very first release of official provincial poverty statistics based on the first semester FIES data. This entire report focuses not only on the 2012 first semester poverty figures, but also figures based on comparable periods of 2006 and 2009 that make use of the new urban rural definition released by the NSO. And now, to proceed to the main focus of this report, the presentation of the 2012 first semester official provincial poverty statistics with comparisons to the first half of the years 2006 and 2009. During the first semester of 2012, a family of five needed around 5,460 pesos monthly income to buy their minimum basic needs on food. And around 7,820 pesos monthly for their minimum basic food and non-food needs. This represents an increase of about 11% for both the food and poverty thresholds 
from the first semester of 2009 to the first half of 2012. Such increases across the years represent inflation adjustments to the food and poverty thresholds. In the first half of 2012, the proportion of Filipino families in extreme poverty whose incomes are not sufficient to meet subsistence or basic food needs stands at 10%. This figure is unchanged from the corresponding first semesters of 2006 and 2009. In the first semester of 2012, out of 100 families, 22 are estimated to be poor. This figure is also practically unchanged from the first half of 2006 and the first semester of 2009. As regards subsistence incidents, about 13 in 100 Filipinos live in extreme poverty in the first half of 2012. This estimate has remained unchanged from similar <coughs> periods of 2006 and 2009. As regards the entire Filipino population, 28 out of 100 Pinoys are living in poverty in the first semester of 2012. Our estimated figure of 27.9% is practically unchanged from the first semester figures of poverty headcounts in 2006 and 2009. During the first half of 2012, on the average, incomes of poor families or individuals are short by 29.3% of the poverty threshold. This means that a poor family with five members needed a monthly average income of 2,290 pesos to move out of poverty in the first semester of 2012. Using figures for the income gap, the NSCD estimates that the total cost for poverty eradication exclusive of targeting costs is 79.7 .7 billion pesos for the first semester of 2012. It must be noted that the budget allocated for the CCP for the entire year of 2012 is 39.4 billion pesos. In other words, the CCT budget for an entire year is only 20, is only 25% of the required annual cost of eradicating poverty. We know that the average incomes in the country rose by 12.8% between the first semester of 2009 and the first half of 2012. For the extremely poor, that is, those belonging to the bottom 10% of income distribution, their incomes during the first semesters of 2009 and 2012 rose by 11.1%. On the other hand, first semester prices of food commodities rose by 12.5%. Across the bottom 30% of income distribution, First semester incomes between 2009 and 2012 rose by an average of 11.7%, which is slightly less than the inflation rate of 11.7% for all items in the entire country. Describing income distribution in the first semester of 2012, as well as the corresponding periods in 2006 and 2009, we observe that the bottom 20% of families have a share of about 6% of the total national income, whereas the upper 20% of income distribution have a share of nearly 50% of total national income. The total income of the top 20% of Pinoy families, in other words, is approximately eight times of the total income of the bottom 20% of Filipino families in the first semesters of 2006, 2009, and 2012. At the regional level, the regions with the lowest poverty incidence among families in the first semesters of 2006, 2009, 
and when we will continue to be the national capital region, Calamar Zone and Central Luzon. As of the first semester of 2012, our consistently figured in the bottom poorest cluster of regions with the highest poverty incidence among families between 42 to 47 percent in the first semesters of 2006, 2009, and 2012. Note that in the first half of 2006 and 2009, Region 9 and Caraga were included in the poorest cluster. While it is worth noting that they did not figure in the bottom cluster during the first semester of 2012, Sok Sargen and Eastern Visayas were new entrants in the set, set cluster at around 37%. While it might seem that there are no changes in poverty conditions, data also actually shows that Caraga improved its poverty incidence significantly from 43% in the first semesters of 2006 and 2009 to 34% in the first half of 2012. Note that Locos region has also significantly improved its poverty incidence from the first semester of 2006 to the first half of 2009. As far as provincial data is concerned, the group of provinces with the least poverty incidence among families remain practically the same, namely the four districts of the National Capital Region, Bataan, Benguet, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, Pampanga, and Rizal, with the addition of Ilocos Norte in the group in the first half of 2012. Noticeably from these maps, we observe that the least poor provinces are all in Luzon, with the addition of Ilocos Norte in the first half of 2012. On the other hand, the provinces with the highest poverty incidence among families consistently in the first semesters of 2006, 2009, and 2012 are the following. Apayao, Davao Oriental, Masbate, Northern Samar, Sultan Kudarat, and Sambuanga del Norte. New entrants in the bottom cluster of provinces in the first semester of 2012 are Bukidnon, Cotabato City, Ifugao, Lanao del Norte, and North Cotabato. Noticeably from the maps on the screen, we observe that the bottom cluster of provinces are mostly in Mindanao. The next maps in the slide show the, that the overall poverty situation among provinces across the first semesters of 2006, 2009, and 2012. Noticeable changes can be observed for some provinces, for some uh, provinces uh, among uh, provinces in northern Luzon with the inclusion of Ifugao. On the other hand, in Mindanao, Agusan del Sur, Surigao del Sur, Surigao del Norte were dropped from the list in the bottom cluster. As we look through these figures, it may also be important for us to remember that there were a number of positive events that transpired between the first semesters of 2009 and 2012. These include increases in the salaries of government employees arising from the salary, salary standardization law of 2009, as well as the upscaling of the conditional cash transfer program of the government, implemented chiefly by the Department of Social Welfare and the Health, and the provision of health insurance for CCP beneficiaries. However, we also remember that natural disasters are becoming a new threat to development. For 2011, extreme events that affected our countrymen, especially the poor, include typhoons Pedrin and Sendong in 2011. 
In the first quarter of 2012, let us also remember that Negros Oriental was affected by an earthquake of magnitude 6.9. In addition, practically the entire country was affected by a low pressure area and continuous rains also in the first quarter of 2012. To summarize, in general, the poverty conditions in the first semester of 2012 appear to be unchanged from the first half of 2006 and 2009. But there were observed improvements in the poverty incidence, particularly in Caraga among the regions. During this period, the rate of increase in the average incomes of the bottom 10% and the bottom 30% is practically the same as the rise of food prices and overall prices, respectively. As far as income distribution is concerned, income inequality continues to persist with the bottom 20% of income distribution having 6% of total national income, while the upper 20% has about 50% of national income. In other words, the upper 20% of income distribution has about eight times the total income of the bottom 20%. And now for some announcements. In addition to the first semester official provincial poverty statistics, the NSCB will be releasing the 2012 official provincial poverty statistics using the results of the two survey rounds of the FIES through another press conference sometime in the third quarter of 2013. The NSCB is also scheduled to release the 2009 to 2011 Philippine National Health Accounts estimates through the NSCB website on the first week of May 2013, and a report covering 2005 to 2011 Philippine National Health Accounts on May 31, 2013. The NSCB is scheduled to release the first quarter 2013 National Accounts estimates through a press conference on the 30th of May 2013 at 10 o'clock in the morning. This press conference will have a conversation on Twitter and it will also be on live stream. Actually, even today's press conference is already on Twitter. Hashtag PH Poverty. And we have also been testing our facilities on live stream. We are also inviting everyone to participate in the 12th National Convention on Statistics, which will be held on October 1 and 2, 2013.